Hello and welcome to Julie Hall Designs. Today I want to share with you one of my favourite techniques with machine embroidery and that is the candle wick technique. As you can see here, and I absolutely love running my hands over the candle wick designs, candle wicking is made up of multiple small knots of fabric. Candle wicking is based on an old fashioned technique using the wicks of candles from and I'm not even sure which time period to be perfectly honest, and forming a knot on muslin fabric to create a decorative pattern. What I've done here is create a design that emulates that and creates a textured look to our, um, to our fabric and our design. So each of these tiny little knots here uh, have approximately 28, I'm thinking, um, stitches of fabric over them. Therefore, candle wicking does take a little bit of time, um, but it is such a beautiful technique and a great way to use your machine. So as you can see here, these are some of the candlewick designs that we have created over the years. And candlewicking can be traditionally in a single colour, but you can see here a lot of these samples, I've done them in multiple colours just to add a more modern feel to it. Um, candlewicking is such a beautiful textural technique that I know you are going to do it over and over again. Okay, let's get started on having a look at how to stitch these beautiful designs. So what you will see here is I have my fabric and my tear away stabilizer. I also have a small piece of embroiderer's felt underneath my candle wicking. And I find it's important to use, sorry, I find it's important to use the embroiderer's felt simply because it does give those stitches something to form around. Now the design that I'm using is one out of the Candlewick Mandala collection. And what you can see here is the initial stitching is coming around and doing a decorative stitch that then the candle wicks are going to form around. So it's just doing its decorative stitching here and it's about to now move over to the candle wicking and I'm just going to zoom in on that a little bit. And what I want to do, and I've slowed this down here, is I just want to show you just how many times each of those stitches are repeated over and over in a knot like formation to create the candle wick design. Because of this, it's important to use a slow speed when you are creating the candle wicking. Um, generally, between five and six hundred stitches per minute is the speed that I want to use. The other thing to be aware of is you cannot resize Candlewick embroidery designs. The reason you can't do this is because we've got a lot of stitches in a very small space and the design will just clump up on top of itself and will not allow you to, um, to get that nice stitches. It will just be one god awful mess. Having said that, these designs come in about four or five multiple sizes, so I'm sure there will be a size that will suit you. Now, some tricks that I've discovered over the years doing um, machine embroidered candle wicking. The first trick is to make sure you have plenty of thread. Because each knot 
is over stitched so often there is a lot of thread used in these designs um, before you begin make sure you do purchase your thread uh, and try and get it from the same dye lot some of the larger mistakes that I've made over the years have been from times that I have created a quilt and I've got to the second last or the last block only to find that I've run out of thread and I've had to try and make do. The other trick that I tell people is to raise your presser foot pressure or height. What we're asking the machine to do here um, or the presser foot is to smoothly run over all of these um, raised up little knots. If you have your presser foot pressure set to quite low, it will or it can jam up. So I raise my presser foot pressure to about two to two and a half millimeters um, just to make sure that I do get a smooth glide over that design. Other than that, Candlewick designs are so, so simple. And one of the reasons that they're so, so simple is because they are generally only um, one or two colors. And there's not a lot of fiddling around. You don't have to trim anything away, etc., and so forth. So to a degree, you can do a set and forget. So what I'm going to do now is come through and show you what this or speed through the rest of the design so that you can see what the finished block looks like. And here you can see our finished block. So as it is coming up to being completed here, I'm hoping that you can really see just how high each of those knots is in relation to the block itself. Um, candle wicking is an amazing technique. It really can just expand what you are able to do with your machine and I hope that you will find it as interesting and as enjoyable as I do. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial. Until next time, thank you for joining us and have a stitching day. Bye.